Good morning, Australia. Welcome to the show, and I won't have a more pleasurable task all year than the one I have now in saying, ladies and gentlemen, Cindy Lauper. <laughs> Hi, Cindy. Hello. Welcome. Hello. It's great to have you here. Please sit down. Enjoy yourself. When it was mentioned uh, at the meeting a couple of weeks ago, we might have the chance of getting you on the show. There were people in the office of all age groups, all persuasions, uh, all uh, <laughs> everything, you know, every uh, persuasions and all Thank ways. you. All saying, well, I haven't finished yet, just saying, it's wonderful to have you here on the show. That happens all around the world, eh? Mm, I don't know, but I'm really excited to be back here. I haven't been here in so long. How long has it been? Um, 1989. Yes, Different sir. century. Last well, century. Yeah, you were here last century. That's right. Cindy, with the new album out, which uh, it's called At Last, and uh, it's, a, it's a great title, and of course it's a great track too, the song itself, but it, it's something which I guess we hadn't expected from you all of a sudden to start to cover other songs and make them your own. The, the song which particularly appeals to me is, is Walk On By. I would have thought that how it was done in the old days was the only way, but you give it Terrific reading. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, we actually were wondering if that was a torch song. And um, at first I was kind of like hell bent on doing torch music. And, you know, it's, you know, for a singer, that's what you learn. You learn all of that. And, and then you, I was a rock and roll singer. That's what I do. But um, I managed to fit this in a little bit. And it was a torch song, I thought. And so, you know, we went from there and uh you know the other songs came to kind of give it an arc mm. you know have you got a favorite on the album hmm. I, I i like stay i like all of them for different reasons you know the, the real dark one i guess would be um the jacques Varel song if you go away but we put like a techno loop to it sure. so it didn't bother me too much you know, but, but it to the difference between this stuff and the rock and roll stuff is the rock and roll stuff eventually you go there but here you have to start with that kind of concentration you have to be there when you start this music yeah. it's really you have to really concentrate what you don't do is you never do the expected no and I, that's always been the case even with your own music uh on stage there's no guarantee that it's going to be exactly the same reading oh, no. as you did the <laughs> night before but that, well, that's exciting though yeah but that's why it's live and i i'm so fortunate this time i i have such a wonderful band i record with them we make music together when we're on the road we think of things and go, oh, wouldn't it be fun? Yeah, okay. And, you know, Sammy, my uh, drummer, he'll get out his little loop, you know, he, he has Pro Tools with him, so he's working on loops all the time. And and we um, we experiment, and, and God bless them all. They're very fearless, and that's what I really love about them. I wonder who they learned that from. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they're great. They're, yeah. they're great. Interesting, isn't it? Like then, back in the uh, in the late seventies, it could have been uh, quite tragic because the old voice left you for what about twelve months there? Oh yeah, but that that was such good luck because I was working cover clubs and um, and I couldn't keep a job because we were supposed to be a bar band and I kept drawing people away from the bar so they weren't drinking. They were standing there watching me, so I wasn't doing very well. But you know, I would never give up, mm -hmm. so um, I just kept doing it. And then, you know, luckily for me, uh, I lost my voice. And I was talking to Deborah Harry when I did um, the Divas thing, and she said, well, then you would have been up to cruise ships by now. So, you know, I guess I walked out. <laughs> you know, I don't yes. know. Yeah. Our piano player is just about to leave on a cruise, but... Uh, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, but, uh, oh, it, it, no. it'll, it'll be oh, okay. No. It, no, 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 I'm only joking. Well, you know, it depends on what He's they just pay, back I from guess. One, but yeah. I don't swim, yeah. you know. It's not exactly. good. Cindy, the, the, <laughs> the intriguing thing uh, about your work is that it doesn't matter what song you're doing, it's, it's still contemporary, even though that song may have been written 30, 40, 50 years ago. You seem to judge your audience pretty well for the day oh honestly i chose songs that were from the 50s and 60s and they were the songs that my parents and the people around me were listening to not necessarily the music i wanted you know the doors and the beatles and janis joplin that was what i loved but these were all the people that i loved that was their music so when i sang it i kind of sang it through how i remember them listening to it 
But these songs are timeless because it doesn't matter if it was the 50s. The lyrics were, they pertain to now. They would pertain to 100 years ago or 100 years from now because the human experience, not to get too deep, but the human experience is always the same, you know? Mm. When, when their dreams and their hearts are on the line, there's a timeless element about being a human being, and that's what I tried to capture in that stuff, except it's, you know, about, I lived in New York, so I wanted to embrace the place that I grew up. Who really impressed you as, you know, you started out very young yourself, but who were the, the singers that impressed you, the artists? Oh, everybody. I just, you know, I saw Judy Garland, I saw Betty Davis. I had, my, when I lost my voice, I think I was reliving Dark Victory when I walked <laughs> out of the doctor's office. But, yeah. you know, I, I, um, I would have to say when I studied, I studied a little jazz. I studied from Betty Scott, who was Lenny Tristano's um, associate. She was a singer in their band. And uh, I guess she turned me on to Billie Holiday, and that really and truly was one of the more startling moments. The thing about Billie that I took away was that she took a song that was sung by tons of people, but every time she sang it, it sounded like she was talking directly to you, so she personalized it. So I tried to personalize what I was doing. I kept that in mind every time, that if you put it into your own bones and what you remember, then, then you're, you're, you're doing the human experience and that touches other people, mm. you know, and that's what I learned from her. So she was the big Well, um, you, you both do that. I remember a quote from Frank Sinatra, which was just, uh, I, I thought, so true, and I'm sure you'd agree with it. He swung it, though. Come on, he would swing Oh, yeah, but he also, he told the story. He did. He was a storyteller. Yeah, and uh, isn't that pretty important? Uh, with, Every with singer singing. is a storyteller. Did you ever meet Betty Davis? You mentioned her then. No, I never did, but my God, I mean, you know, when I was little, I kept watching her on, you know, all those old movies. I don't know, I guess I watched a lot of old movies, yeah. so, you know, I kind of, I kind of, I did a little homage to the Valley of the Dolls today, you know, but... <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, I'm just rereading a book on, uh, on Betty Davis and Joan Crawford and their well-known loathing of, uh, of each other, and it's... It really is a superb book because it's, you know, it, it tells it as it really is and the quotes are quite amazing from both those great ladies, both wonderful stars and wonderful actresses who just simply loathed each other. I know, but you know, Joan was a little harsh. Well, the two of them, I guess, were very harsh, but funny. Come on, that whatever happened to Baby Jane had to be one of the best movies. I mean, you still quote her yeah. all the time, you know. I think Jane Crawford slept with everybody in Hollywood, according to the... Uh, Did she? Yeah. Oh, the trial. To the book, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Nothing was left for anyone by the time Joan got oh, through with them. Oh, my gosh, yeah. yeah. Well, no, there were other women that, that slept around quite a bit. Marlena... Name Dietrich. one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Marlena Dietrich did. Yeah. But you she, adore her, don't you? Marlena I think Dietrich. she's fantastic. Listen, I don't think it's wrong. Just safe sex, that's all. Mm. Be, be safe. Yeah. yeah, she was pretty heavy at the other business, wasn't she? The uh, old Vala Crumble. OK, well, <laughs> oh, I, uh, <laughs> I, but I actually met Marlena. Did you meet her? No, you uh, did. Yep. You met everybody. No, 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 but I met Marlena Dietrich. Oh, I never meet anybody. And, OK, uh, so how was and, it? Uh, she hit on you? No, I got no, her a cup of coffee one day. <laughs> 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 the princess there. But she was amazing. She spent more time, or as much time, in preparing to leave the theatre for the thousand fans that were waiting outside the theatre as she did for the show itself. She was one of those people that believed if they pay their money, they've got to get the full value, you know? Uh, yeah, you know, that's true. But sometimes it's hard when you're leaving because you give 150% on stage. By the time you get off, you're like, ay, 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 ay. My makeup, okay, listen, I'll just sign, okay? Yeah, but I think in Marlene's case, of course, she no, had to get back didn't. to the hotel for the other business, so she wanted to look. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice. It's, uh, she, uh, 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 we'll come back in just a few moments' time with Cindy Lauper. It is great to have you here. <laughs> States.
We're thrilled to have Cindy Lauper uh, with us this morning as uh, a special guest. We'll put the tour dates up for Cindy. We've discovered that it's not since 89 have we had the pleasure of uh, enjoying Cindy here. I believe yesterday was quite a big shopping day for you. Cindy, you got down to South Melbourne and went through it all? No, actually I didn't. Yesterday I just crashed. I just stayed It was in. the day before, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What'd you I, buy? I did. Oh, no, I just bought a little present from my friend Molly, Molly Meldron. I haven't right. seen him in, I didn't, I wasn't, hadn't seen him in 20 years. He's a great bloke, isn't he? Oh, he's a riot. I've slept with him, too. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a, he's a knockout uh, guy. It's an old line I use because eventually the guest says, who haven't just slept with? You see, you, yeah. you're just competing with Joan now. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not at all. Oh. Not at all. Yeah. So, so what, it was just a little present for Molly and the whole day. Give him our love, will you, because he's a fantastic... Oh, he's, right. he's great. He's great. So you, you come to the show? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. uh, but may I see those dates? Again, I'm doing a theatre show uh, at, the, at the moment, so it might be a little Oh, hard. are you? Let's have a look. Friday. Oh, yeah, I'll miss you. What are oh, you doing? Oh, so what are you doing? I'm doing uh, the uh, Life and Loves of Shakespeare. <gasps> uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, before I, I did this sort of thing, I was, uh, well, even though I said myself, Australia's uh, most respected Shakespearean actor. <laughs> and... Uh, no, they're laughing because uh, they haven't seen the show. And they're, they're jealous. Yeah. Uh, Yorick's our floor manager. Less poor Yorick's, I knew him. Well. <laughs> no, in fact, I'm doing the producers. Uh, you know, Are Mel you Brooks, really? Uh, show. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. 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 Have yeah. you seen that on. Yeah, Broadway? my friend Nathan. I, I went oh, to go right. see Nathan. He was great. Yeah, I was in a movie with Nathan, and his last name is Lane. And my cousin, his name is Lane. So I just kept knocking on his trailer saying, are you one of my cousins? <laughs> Are you receiving? <laughs> was he a nice guy to work with? Oh, yeah. I'm yes, trying to think of the movie. Terrible. Oh, it was a bad one. It was uh, Life with Mikey. It was a... Uh, I don't think it, I don't think it, it was 1993. No, and, and a good thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have a prescience for doing those, but I meet great friends. I met my husband in one, and, you know... But, you know, I, I did a good television show, so I, I don't feel so bad. Do you see Nathan now? Um... Uh, once in a while. My schedule, I've, I haven't even been home. If you see him, will you give him my very best? Oh, I will. I will. Do, do you know him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, I know. He's great. Yeah, He's so funny. Yeah, great guy. Little nutty. Good old Nat. Yeah. <laughs> Cindy, is it a magic moment when you, one of your favourite times when you get out there and you actually have that audience in front of you? You seem to be one of those performers that, that lives in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I, you're an actor. Wow, so you understand. That's good. Um, uh, I understand no. what? Oh, you yes, get, getting there with you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, I, I... Oh, well, yeah, I was in the moment there. They gave me a lot of grief about the dripping makeup. They said, you're sweating. And they said, yeah. You know, I guess it's sexier when Mick Jagger sweats. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a pretty good point, isn't it? Pretty good point. <laughs> yeah, a little sexist, but, hey, uh, you know. What's but, next? Is there anything next that you haven't done? I think um, I, I, I'd like to do some work on Broadway. Uh, this way I could be home and see my son grow a little bit. Elvis, no, he's named after... Elvis, no, Co he's actually named Declan. Oh. Elvis Costello, his real name is Declan. Um, oh, I see. Declan oh, I see. McManus, yeah. Right, right. So, but we liked the name Declan, and of course I thought I was having a girl, so we had all these girls' names picked out, and then finally we did the test, and I said, well, guess what? We're having a boy. And, you know, after I told my husband, a mother knows. <laughs> did you want to find out, did you? That always intrigues me. Um, well, you know, I waited right to the end of... Uh, I was 44 when I had my son. Mm. So he was, uh, you know, I think it was wise to make sure he was okay, mm. you know. And um, he was. And... Uh, we picked out Declan and, and Braveheart. His name is Declan Wallace. And um, actually, when I did one of the tests, I was on tour with Tina Turner, and I came back, and they found a little hole in his heart that didn't close. So, you know, we became very concerned, and I, I couldn't really leave the tour. So I just kept talking to him at that point. And it was ironic that it was going to be Wallace after Braveheart. My husband loved Braveheart and the music so much that every time he'd go in, he's an actor, so he would always be preparing for his scripts. He'd have the music going. So every time you'd go in, it would always be on one of those swells, like da-da-da, and you'd be like, 
Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you know? But but we called him. Um, his his middle name is Wallace, and he does have a brave little heart. He, he was fine. Is he okay? He's it fine caused, now. It you know, years ago they never did all these tests, so they didn't know. You know, and everybody develops differently. And for this little guy, by the time he was born, his heart closed, and he had a nine ten Abcar score. You know where they come mm, out. Yeah. I didn't do any drugs. Yeah. But I thought he had a heart problem, so I didn't, you know. Mm. And uh, and he actually, um, it was natural birth, and uh, was he it was nine for? pounds. I mean, I guess you can't make the comparison. I could Because you went, but were <laughs> the, uh, apart from that, was that the result of you being a, um, an older mother of 44, the, the heart deal or nothing? No, I have no idea. No, mm. just genetics. Mm. You said you didn't do drugs. Were you doing drugs bef before that? Did I do drugs before? Yeah. What do you mean? When well, I was a teenager? Yeah. Oh, no, no, I, th I thought like you... Like everyone at the time. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. sorry. Well, not Shakespearean no, 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 actors. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, oh, you mean to have the kid. Yeah, well, oh, no. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, he, yeah was, yes. he was in vitro, but I went to a Chinese doctor and a Western doctor at the same time. You know, it's the same thing like when you go to Japan, they go to one temple and the other temple right after. You gotta hedge your bets, yeah, you know. Just in case. Just in case. Somebody gotta be listening, you know. Now, I went to the Chinese doctor to balance out all the stuff that medicine does because it makes you ill. Mm -hmm. And the it's all about balance. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. I got this yang. kid. And, what? Uh, I hope this works. Yin and yang. Yin and yang. Yeah. Oh! See, it's nice that somebody else act? has an accent. <laughs> yeah. Yang and Yang. Oh, but you'd, be, you'd believe in Yang and Yang and all that, wouldn't you? I do, yeah. yeah. My sister's a Chinese doctor. She's not Chinese, but she's uh, she studied the right. medicine. Have they realised she's not Chinese? I suppose they would have done. <laughs> no, she yeah. not last time I did. So she, yeah. she's natural therapy? And, and yes, yes. Yeah. It's intriguing. I mean, that's growing and growing all the time, isn't it? Well, it's, it, they must be doing something right. You go to Chinatown, there's so many kids, they know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I understand. That's right. It could be because of the medicine. Yeah. If only I'd known that when I knew Marlena. Well, there you go. Well, you know, you're trying to compete with Joan again. See, I, yeah, you're very right. competitive that's in right. nature. And I'm only marginally more attractive than her. <laughs> no, you're very attractive. You look very nice. Thank you, Cindy. You thank, are. You, oh, thank you so much. I don't give these to too many people, but I'd like you to accept a, a copy of my Bert and Patty family album. I'm thinking of taking that on the road too, you know. I mean, a lot of, a lot of good songs there that uh, you've not heard. There's a wonderful version of Walk On By. Anyway, Cindy, <laughs> it is great to meet you. Welcome oh. back to Australia. I can't tell you how much oh. of a thrill it is to have you on the oh, show. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, Cindy. Cindy, welcome. Let's put up the dates again, if, uh, if you will, there, Peter. Because this is the, uh, the opportunity to see a great artist uh, in action, doing her hits, but also doing tracks from the new album, which is called At Last. There's a DVD, which is available too, live at uh, At Last. I recommend them both to the three of them to you, adding to the uh, DVD and the CD, the, uh, the opportunity of seeing her live here in Australia. Later on the show, we've got uh, lots of great music from the bar at Bonavista. But after this break, Kane from Big Brother.